Oye, oye, oye. Oye, oye, oye. Oye, oye, oye. Let all manner of persons having anything to do with the administration of justice in this country draw nigh. Remain seated and attentive past his Lordship, Mr. Justice AAPC Kokojo, administers justice to his countrymen and women without fear or favor. Your Lordship, case number one. Motion number 73 slash 2023. OT Development Bank versus Lulogi Farmers Association. Any representation? If it pleases my lord, I appear for the applicant. My name is Ya Jacobo. If it pleases my lord, my name is Sarah Fafakudi. I appear for the respondent. What is the business for the day? Counsel for the applicant. My lord, the application before you is stay for execution pending the determination of the appeal against the judgment made by this honorable court. There's one decision of the high court by Justice Ajabe, as he then was, which I'm looking for, but yet to find. I'm told Antonia Kotoa Pau Esquire made strong arguments in that case, which persuaded the then Justice Ajabin to rule in his favor. I have an appointment with Antonia Kotoa Pau Esquire to pick a copy of the judgment, which is unreported. Kindly indulge me for one minute. Very well. I accept your explanation. I will grant the last adjournment, and the applicant must be prepared to conduct his case at the next adjournment date if counsel is absent. The case is adjourned to 20th December 2023. Suit number 1512 2023. Sa versus Adam. Any representation? May it please this court, Nicholas Lennon Anami Eji, I appear for the plaintiff. May it please the honorable court, my name is Andrew Apao Obin. My lord, I appear for the defendant. Yes, what is the position now? My lord, we argued the preliminary points raised by the defendant as to whether the electoral commission can be restrained by a deliberate injunction from exercising its statutory discretionary powers. Yes, counsel for the plaintiff, you said you were going to furnish me with an authority that affirms your position that the Electoral Commission can be restrained when exercising its statutory discretionary powers. What happened? My Lord, I stated on the last agenda date that the position of the law was enunciated in a case that Anthony Akuto Alpao Esquire was involved. I sent one of my juniors to him and he has promised to furnish me with a citation. I believe that case is a compelling precedent. It is therefore necessary to adjourn for me to get the authority. I'm not inclined to grant any further adjournment. Respected lawyer, Anthony Akuto Alpao, who with permission I fondly call Sheshe, was in my court last week, and I got a citation from him. I have read the authority, and I've made up my mind on the preliminary points raised. By court, the Electoral Commission is the only body clothed with constitutional authority to create constituencies on Article 47 of the Constitution. Clauses 2, 3, and 4 thereof have prescribed the modalities for creating the constituencies. The plaintiff is of the view 
that in exercising this power to create constituencies, the Electoral Commission did not comply with certain requirements, and he therefore mounted this action for the remedies set out in the writ. He seeks to invoke the original jurisdiction of this court for an order of perpetual injunction. On the back of that relief, he is before me praying for an order of interlocutory injunction. I hereby hold that the Electoral Commission can be restrained by an order of interlocutory injunction when performing its statutory function. However, given the facts before the court, if the interlocutory application by the plaintiff succeeds here and the defendants are restrained from doing what has been complained against them, but the plaintiff fails in the substantive action, the injury caused the nation will be irreparable. The national electionarian program for the year would grind to an abrupt halt. The balance of convenience tilts in favor of the defendants and therefore Tribute by and on behalf of the presidential election petition team. Great men die and leave their footprints an indelible mark in the sands of time. You have played your role. The labor starts is over. And here we lie our brother sleeping. It is with a lot of fond memories and of course very deep sense of loss and grief that we pay this tribute to our friend, brother, colleague and uncle. Indeed, his humanity and the life he led has wrapped on almost all of us who associated with him in one way or the other. If there is any man, or for that matter, lawyer, who lived, displayed and exhibited such distinctive independence of mind and thought in most, if not all, of his decisions, then is the only one and irresistible Shea Dishé. Shea Dishé graduated with the Bachelor of Law with a Bachelor of Laws degree from the University of Ghana, Legon, in the year 1973, when most of us had barely been born. But his striking humility in the practice and knowledge of the law was obvious for all to emulate. Akuto, as some of us fondly called him, was not given to ostentation and boastfulness. He was a teacher and a good listener. Our path as lawyers was to cross as fate will have it when we were assembled to conduct, handle, and put in a strong case in defense for His Excellency the President of the Republic, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, in the presidential election petitions of 2013 and 2020, respectively. She was an integral and, and indispensable member of the 2013 Liga team and lead counsel of the 2020 team. His thoughtfulness, legal acumen, and piercing penchant for detail was brought to bear on both briefs. In fact, his analytical mind, passion for research, and long forays into the dark results of the night to ensure we met our deadlines was amazing and a huge sense of inspiration to the team. As the cliche will have it, he left no stone unturned and gave nothing to chance or good luck. In all of this, he still remained his humble self, but we couldn't take his innate humility for granted because Akuto, Akuto was firm in principle and would definitely tell you as it is if you dared cross his path in a bad way. Even though he was much older than all of us, he took in suggestions from the most junior in the team and would readily embrace all shades of opinion on the point of law. Indeed, such was his character trait, unassuming, respectful, accommodating, and a remarkable gentleman. Akoto, you have, Anthony, sorry, you have imparted greatly on all of us, especially Gabriel, sorry, Gabi Asari Ochidako, the indisputable research assistant. You had a fine, sharp, and thorough mind and did not hold that to yourself alone. You tutored and mentored so many generations of laws. 
when your health took a dive in the last couple of years, we prayed for Antonia Kutwapa, also known as Shishi, joined the Kufuado Pepe crew and a crowd based legal firm after he had been enrolled to practice as a legal practitioner at the Ghana Bar in the same year. His reputation preceded him as a left wing political activist, human rights advocate, and a pan Africanist. Most of the lawyers then at the office had heard or read about him during his student days at the Faculty of Law, University of Ghana. The firm was then headed by His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudankwa Ekufu Adu, a founding partner. This was at a time when robust discussions on legal and political issues in the country were frequent in the office. Sheshe easily fitted in into the mode and soon became one of the initiators of the discussions. He did not disappoint and they read the discussions with his experience, breadth of knowledge, insight and perspectives. In his usual calm and firm nature, he would delve into the historical, social and political reasons and opinion issues and challenge received wisdom. Some of us were intrigued by the detentions he suffered under the government of the Provincial National Defense Council based on an alleged fallout. He explained that he and others only give their critical support to the government, but were not part of it. The support was withdrawn within a short period when they realized that decisions and actions made were not in the interest of the country. He was older in age than the lawyers in the office except the head of the firm. However, he was humble to learn from them as a junior lawyer and sought input and reviews of his work from them. This character endeared him to his seniors and made his integration to the office smooth. Given his interest, political persuasion, and political experience as an activist, it was not surprising that his practice soon focused on human rights, constitutional law, land and natural resource, enactment of legislation to empower the poor and the disadvantaged in the country to engender national development. At the time of his death, he was the chairman of the Law Reform Commission, a duty discharged with zeal and commitment. He was a valued member of various teams of lawyers within and outside the Kufuado Pemper and Co, who prepared legal briefs and advocated in court cases on constitutional issues, particularly freedom of speech and the media, in spite of which he was a towering and outstanding legal brain. There were constant requests and invitations to him to participate in seminars, forum, and conferences on various aspects of freedom of speech and the media and human rights in and outside Ghana. Together with His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana and others, he had advocated and led public discussions and sensitization on the need to repeal the law on criminal libel as being a fetter on freedom of speech and the media. This was achieved during the administration of former President John Ejikum Kufo. A lasting testament to his unwavering commitment to freedom of speech and then the media was his authorship in the year 2004 of an exhaustive and well researched book, Legislation on Media Speech on media, speech, and expression in Ghana, a source book. Some of the outstanding court cases he handled were Public vs. Karim Musali for Adam, Ibele Dusset vs. Attorney General, Kweku Ngami Tiasi, Ishen vs. the Electoral Commission, Mati Amidu vs. Attorney General. In the year 2013, he was a member of the legal team that represented the petitioners in the presidential election petition in the Supreme Court, entitled Nana Adodan Kweku Fuadu and others versus John Dramani Mana, Mahama and others. In the year 2021, he was the lead counsel for the first respondent in the presidential election petition at the Supreme Court in the case entitled John Dramani Mahama versus Nana Adudankwe Kufuadu and another. These were two, this, these two cases are among the most sensitive and critical election petition cases in the history of this country. He left a lasting impression of thoroughness, commitment, and clarity of thought on all, all matters, both legal and non-legal. As a lawyer, his court practice was characterized by, characterized by calmness, diligence, and well-respected advocacy. 
that was worthy of emulation. This was admired by counsel on the other side of the case. His advice and opinion were sought and valued by colleague lawyers, both on court and non-court matters. The reputation of a Kufuado Pempe and Co. is anchored on high standards of work and adherence to the ethics of the legal profession, with the founding fathers made non-negotiable, founding partners. Training and mentoring of young lawyers were therefore essential to maintain the reputation. Antonia Contrapa assumed the unofficial role of training master. His love for research, calm disposition, ever willingness to engage in discussions and sharing of knowledge attracted junior lawyers to him. It was not uncommon to find junior lawyers assembled in his office in the evening discussing and reviewing their work. He was not only a senior teacher and mentor to them, but the father, because he, he was interested in their life outside work. Their hearts are broken by his death. Sheshe was synonymous with long hours of work that did not know day or night or day of rest. His rest which surpassed that of the founding part, f f partner of the firm, His Excellency the President Donald Danko Ekufuado, which was very high. An elderly person, resident near the office, once asked if he did not have a bed at home because he, she saw him frequently in his office late at night and at dawn from her bedroom window. He persisted on paying attention to detail, clearly stated legal positions, and in this pursuit, legal documents went through various drafts. Working with him jointly on any case meant you had to be ready to burn the midnight candle and work on weekends. Pro bono work was very important to him, and he instilled in the juniors at the office the value of giving back to society to work for the poor and indigent persons who had good legal cases. The issues on the delimitation of the maritime boundaries between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire ended up in a dispute at the Special Char Tribunal of the International Tribunal of Law of the Sea. The decision was favorable to Ghana, and therefore the country can exploit hydrocarbon and other resources within the disputed area. Antonio Kufuado was one of the was a member of the legal team that represented the country in the international arbitration of the dispute. His good work was duly recognized by the states, and in March 2023, he was awarded the national honors of Order of the Companion, Order of the Water Companion Division. Akutuampa was not only an outstanding, decent, and hardworking lawyer, humanist, human rights advocate commitment to upliftment, upliftment of the less privileged, but also a good person. As head of the firm, I could not have asked for a better deputy. Our discussions and decisions about the firm were based on transparency, fairness, 